So thanks for coming and joining me today, you guys. Um, I'm Tiffany, and again, I live in Cheyenne. I teach at East High School. I just put a graphic organizer on everybody's spots. You guys want to grab one of those? Sorry, if you're familiar with Mad Libs, this is kind of the direction that we're going with this. So we're going to just jump right into some writing. So on the very far right of that sheet um, is a spot for you to write in. So number one, I'm just looking for a gerund verb. So if you don't remember what a gerund verb is, um, it ends with an ing. So walking, running, talking, those are gerund verbs. Um, then as any good teacher, I did this, printed 30 copies, and then realized that number two is actually a plural noun. So dog horses. Uh, I'll give you a few minutes to complete one through 10. you for just one second. I see people finishing. So there is paragraphs with whited out spots. So number one will align with your number one in your mad lib sheet. So for instance, my word was walking and my second word was dogs. So I'm just going to write those as people finish. Just write them into those spots. So my title is now, now walking friendly dogs. So go ahead and just substitute your words in there.
And as people wrap up, uh, just grab someone next to you who's also done and read yours to them. So if I'm done, she's done, I read, then she reads. I'm only going to give you a minute because you have about 30 seconds each to read your newly completed paragraph. Go. So who heard a great one that you're like, oh, everybody needs to hear this. This is pretty funny. This is pretty good. Who heard one that thinks should be shared with everybody? You heard one? Ashley, Ashley, are you comfortable reading, or would you like Sarah to read it? Yeah, I can read it. Here, can you catch Sarah? Uh, yeah, maybe I should make her read it since she volunteered to read it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed it on my way back from lunch, but just as I decided to get a cup of some beer, someone came from the corner and moved in ahead of me. All right. Thanks. <laughs> okay, so in the effort of time, we're just going to move on. So uh, today we're going to examine the essential question, in what ways uh, can teachers engage and motivate writers in the pre-writing process? So I'm focusing strictly on pre-writing, specifically idea generation today and the actual pre-write itself, um, mainly because of time. So you, as participants, are going to experience a session whose purpose is to demonstrate engagement and motivation for writers. Um, and I say experiment because for most of it, I'll act as the teacher, and so I'll try to stand over here where I'm acting as the teacher and you're the student, which we just did. And then when I'm pulling out to debrief, I'll stand over here as facilitator, which is where I am now. Um, so because of time, again, just idea generation and pre-writing. Um, so we're going to jump right in. And so today, um, our topic today is the personal essay. So what has happened um, with our quick writes this morning is I had a chance to check in on your grammar skills, kind of review what you knew about parts of speech and what you might not know. So to pause, it was pretty, I knew exactly, okay, we need to review direct object, um, the gerund when I said the ing, which I expected because I put it on the sheet. Some people were like, what is that again? So again, just a, a really quick pre-assessment where kids are writing and I'm getting to know what they know and don't know instantly. 
Um, so I've chosen the personal essay for you guys today for a couple of reasons. Um, it engages students in four ways. Um, one is it's low risk. Personal essay, essay is low risk. The content is close to the kids. They don't have to come up with a lot of ideas. Um, it's high interest because there's a lot of student choice involved in it. Um, and it builds community. So I get to know you guys, you get to know each other, those sorts of things. And um, it's a common core school standard. So in 10th grade, it's number three in writing. <laughs> uh, writing a narrative. So now I'm back over here. So we started class with some fun grammar review, um, quickly skimmed a personal essay. So I gave you Sedaris' original piece that you could compare um, later on in class, we're going to get to the personal essay piece, but I wanted you to have both right now. Um, so just to review, personal essays and autobiography, it's a story about yourself, um, and it's conversational and creative. So basically, what story do you want to tell? So in your writing journal, and if you don't have your writing journal with you today, you can use the back of the graphic organizer I gave you. I'm going to give you one minute to list all the topics from your life that you can turn into a story that you want to tell people um, that you would be willing to share. So one minute list talk. And as you finish, take a look back at your list. I want you to circle the number one. That right now you're like, I think this is the top one I want to write about. Go ahead and circle that, please. And then what I want you to do is you'll notice there's three sets of chart paper around the room. One in the back, one in the back by the door, and one up here. And there should be markers on the tables for everybody. Write that. Pick the paper closest to you and write your topic on that paper, please, and then freeze where you are. One minute, talk to the people at your paper about your topic. I was floating down the river last week, no, Monday of this week, in a gradually deflating kayak. I thought of my sister, they pumped it up, and then the bottom was flat. Yeah, I didn't get it. Yeah.
a buyer. She brought it. We had a bunch of inner tubes. She's like, Matt, yeah, you use this one. When I had a tag last time we went, and it was good, and it worked fine, I liked it, but I sat in it. Okay, wrap up your conversation. Not here as much as I would have done. It's okay if you're not done. It's okay if you're not done. Go to a different poster, split up with your people, say thank you, find a different poster. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you don't have to go together. Just take a look at what other people are thinking about. <laughs> Any different? Yeah, just see what other people wrote about. <laughs> now, tell your new person with you about your topic. Tell your new person, tell them about your topic. If you didn't finish last time, I'd go first. Go, you have a minute. Thanks, Ashley. Matt, you've been nominated as well. Um, on Monday, I was floating. 
came down the Weaver River there in Ogden Canyon in Utah with my parents and my two brothers and my sister, and we'd gradually be flating kayaks. And we, didn't have, we didn't know it had a hole in the bottom until we got into it. Uh, we just kept that, I just kept that, kept going. Well, I gradually lost air, and as I was going under one of the bridges, I hit a pole where it divided the kayak in half, and the, the current went in both ends of the kayak. I had to get out, pick the kayak up, and then it just got worse. <laughs> so I'm like riding it like an inflatable dolphin down the river, going over rapids and rocks, trying not to drown. And, and I did drown. I died. Oh. <laughs> Amazing. And now you're back. <laughs> so thanks, Matt, for sharing, and thank you, everyone, for sharing with each other. Um, now that you've had a chance to clarify your thinking about your topic, you've had a chance to read other people's topics, um, you can change or keep your own, and we're going to move into pre-writing. So you can skip a line on your paper and begin pre-writing. So what I want to do, though, for us, because we have nine minutes left, is to pause there. Um, so you guys would move into pre-writing, and I would come around and conference talk, do that sort of thing. Um, but what I want to do is have some time to share out about these two ideas of why we're here, motivation and engagement. Um, so let's just share a whole group, first of all, and then I'll give you a chance to talk at your table. No, let's flip that around. Talk at your tables first. So, um, ways, things that we did, that you did, that I did, that were motivating or engaging, um, what worked and didn't work, successes, challenges, your own fears um, that you might be thinking about, like, ooh, I don't know if I can do this, with my grade levels, those sorts of things. So talk until 11.30, okay? Just talk to the people around you about motivation engagement, what we did, that were those things in your mind, and then your application pieces, how this might work or not work in your classroom. And then we'll come back together. Conversations. 
let's go whole group. I'm just gonna kind of chart what you say. So the, the things that you did took part in, motivating and engaging. What did you guys talk about? Okay. Are those separate in your mind or together? Together, and small groups. Okay. Telling it three times either to show me two things either I really want to write it or I don't want to write it. Okay, we talked a little bit about that idea too about having to commit to something. Sometimes it's important for them to stick with what they commit to. Mm -hmm. And as we were talking about that, like Ashley said, I think maybe she didn't kind of change that thought. I liked the poster because it forced me to commit to something, but then because we're still in pre writing, to then have the chance to say, I can't change okay. what I'm doing because I've heard other ideas. But it gave them something to commit to because you're going to share something. And then if I decide I don't like what I'm sharing, ideas out there. Did you already say just a mix of people? Like each time they were with different people. Okay. Like I had physical people. movement, but the actual different people. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Shaking it up. Right. What did you say about the people? Just moving around the campus. Okay. And I have for you in the when you leave professional development. <laughs> and most of these you've said, um, and I do have some references. The references are secondary references, um, mainly, just so you guys know that. But the assignments, I talked about this at the beginning. Um, when you're choosing what you're going to have the kids do, you know, choose things that engage them. And a lot of those ideas came from that Gallagher text that's listed at the bottom. Um, the activities, and I heard some of these that I didn't necessarily see up there, but a lot of these are up here already, except for the candy one. Um, there's tons of research that goes back and forth. Some people are like, you should never extrinsically motivate kids. Um, and then some are like, yeah, like, let's be real. So again, I'm a teacher. I teach 10th grade, book grade. I'm writing candy on the list. <laughs> so they just love it. And, and I used to do it, you know, once a week, and I had this thing. And then last year, I kind of forgot about it, just like I forgot about it 10 years ago. And just at the beginning of the year, and then boom, I mean, the kids are off and running, they get the routine, they get, they get it. Um, and then just questions for teachers to consider when you're putting together your units or your daily plans, um, some questions to consider. And again, all of this stuff comes from a lot of places, but these four resources, the Gallagher and the Penny Kittle, to me, I use that. I've used it for years. I picked it up through Writing Project um, a while ago. So, 
she's definitely doing it. Again, mainly secondary, but um, good for anybody. So closing thoughts. Um, again, when you talked, I heard some people saying, oh, I could, I could do this in my classroom. And again, you know, thinking about what you're going to take out of here and try to apply or use in your teaching situation. Um, but we have about a minute left if anybody has a question. or How does this know. work for non-narrative assignments? So it's not a personal essay. It's something else. Like, what, what do you mean how does what work? Like engagement, motivation? So, or well, the, the writing the idea. Okay. Right? Like, so my, we do a narrative writing once at the beginning of junior English, but all the other writing from then on is going to be critical analysis. Sure. Not literature. And so I, I, I'm able to answer one question, then I was, okay, what are you going to write about this text? Write it out on the board, and then you can go write it down and say this, I think, about this. And then you can yeah, yeah, I think you did just answer your question. Yep, that you just, just give them, give, I think giving them the opportunities to share and get it out there, and then be flexible, like commit to it or change from it. Um, a lot of times when I saw this year with seniors especially, they go, oh, I, you know, or the kids who kind of struggle, then they go, they hear, oh, you're gonna do something on haunted places. There's like supposedly three haunted places in Cheyenne. It's like, well, you're, so you're gonna go there and like try to think and see a ghost. And they're like, oh, I'm interested in that. And so they'll either they'll kind of offshoot by listening to somebody as well. Cause then, you know, cause you always have that little guy or girl who's like, and I'm gonna like write about or, you know, so. Are you firm on the time frame? Cause you had a minute at each one. Did you do like two minutes? Or? That's a good question. So I'm a time aholic. I start on time and end on time, and that's it, it. Was okay. Yes, I'm firm on the time. One, we were pretty tight, so obviously it would change. And I'm on a block schedule, so yeah. I, you know, the time itself can change depending on your class period. Um, I'm firm in a way with that because I knew that you were going to talk again and again. It was okay if you didn't get a chance to share or you got cut off because I knew you were good. Eventually, by the end of it, you'd get to share. Because um, some kiddos don't want to share, ever. But then by the end, you're like, oh, I haven't told anybody this yet. Or I heard Heather say, hey, I haven't heard yours. And kids do that, right? Like, they fail no. And I heard Ash oh, I, I heard part of yours. I want to be in your group. So those kind of things. So the time I, I am, but it also kind of depends. Do they need the whole time or not? And sometimes I'll lie to kids. I'll say five minutes, but I know it's only three in my mind. And I use a timer, so I'm part of it's classroom management for me. And part of it's just kind of knowing, okay, I know that I'm gonna need that much time for these three kiddos, so I gotta have a plan for these 23. Yeah, and personally, I go short on time. I call it the peak of fun, like the peak of fun. They're just getting into it, and then they go, oh, we want more time. And it's like, if I hear them say that, then I'm like spot on, because otherwise that's what happens. You mean you don't give them more time? Nope. I'm like, sit down. Because they're ready to write. Yeah, yeah. Like, yes, now I'm motivated. I'm like, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and then your energy level right. disappears. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I was about to phrase it. So I know we need to wrap up and go over next door. If you want to take a picture of this, again, most of it's on the handout. Um, feel free. If, you, if, you, if you're like, oh, i got to do this, you know, take some time to write down your ideas and go ahead next door. Thank you all for joining me today.